That's some good stuff right there. Ginger tea is the best. What's going on guys? Sir Lion Heart here coming at you with a video. It's a new decade, it's a new year, it's 2020, and I want to start off the year doing an AMA video that I planned on doing consistently last year, but we only did one AMA video and it kind of got swept under the rug. But this year I want to do AMA videos every month, once every month on the last Thursday of every month going forward this year, I want to record a AMA video that will pretty much answer your guys' questions that you leave for me via Discord. So if you go to my Discord, and if you're not there already, you can get there by clicking one of the links down below in the description box of this video and clicking on that Discord link and being accepted into the Discord and going to the gaming discussions channel or you know channel and then clicking on the ax lion anything tab there that's where you can leave your questions for me to answer for these type of videos i won't answer every question all right i will try to get as many questions answered as possible when i do these videos so forgive me if i don't answer your question in the future in the next video i might be able to answer that question depending on if i find that question worth answering or not you know but if I don't answer it, it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just there's a lot of other questions I'm probably just more eager to answer or just more interested in answering myself. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, I feel like this is maybe a great way to interact with the community a little bit more. And for you guys, uh, give, and it will also give you guys a chance to pretty much pick my brain for whatever subject. Rather, it's just gaming, personal life stuff. Or just a really silly dumbass question you want to ask me and just want to see my reaction uh go ahead and go ask you know go ask that question for me and leave it in the discord you know where to find the discord if you're already there just go to the x anything the x line anything tab and just leave that question all right we tried to do this last year uh it didn't work out i guess i didn't plan out a schedule for myself so uh, the way we got the way we're going to do things this year is the last thursday of every month uh, I'm going to pretty much be taking the time for the last Thursday of every month to just make a video where I just, you know, answer your guys' questions from Discord. And then I'll post that video on the last day of every month. So the 30th, the 31st, whatever. All right. So like I'll record it on the last Thursday and then whatever is the last day, last day, I will go ahead and post that video up on the last day of the month. So. That's how this is gonna work. Anyway, without further ado, let us start answering some questions. So Kaz asks, what's your favorite game of the decade? I think everybody would probably know this answer by now. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely my favorite game of the decade because of the fact that it's pretty much changed my life just from playing this one game all right it's affected my perspectives on just society as well and it's also gave me uh some you know it, it broadened my horizons when it came to just playing so many different types of games as well so this game is persona 4 golden okay that game changed my life i say it changed my life because it pretty much catapulted just playing the game on youtube for people to see catapulted me into being able to do you know play video games for a living it essentially got me the audience that i need to be able to sustain uh, a living from just playing games so that by itself that by itself is a really good reason and then the fact that i enjoy the game very much just being able to play a, a, a pretty fun rpg and then the, the story is just pretty great. It's pretty captivating. The characters are fun and engaging. And then the gameplay itself is actually challenging. And at the same time, it's very fun because it allows you to express yourself with so many different customization options for you to pretty much uh, make your main character, you know, make your, make your play style change for your main character like you can play defensively you can play support you can play offensively like i love that 
I love that in games. So being able to customize and fuse personas and optimize abilities, all that stuff is great. Being able to just express yourself as the main character was fun. Being able to socialize in the game, being able to like talk with people, uh, build bonds with them, being able to just give your answers and pretty much that would affect your relationship with them and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. You know, that game definitely was my game of the decade just for overall, just playing it. It just changed my life. It literally did. <laughs> I can honestly say Persona 4 Golden is my game of the decade. All right. And it has changed my life for the better. So hands down, I'm going to say P4G. There's, I don't think there's any other answer I could actually give you right now for my game of the decade personally okay so i hope that answers your question cause on to the next one so fuku ask are you thinking of playing any older rpgs this year or are you hoping to play some of the newer ones coming out which ones so i do plan on playing a mix of newer and older games this year um We've already been playing a lot of older games on our Twitch channel. We've been playing the hell out of Trails in the Sky. We beat, we just recently beat the first Trails in the Sky, but I plan on playing Trails in the Sky 2 and 3, which are older games uh, that were originally, I guess, made in the early, you know, mid 2000s, I suppose. And other, other older games I do want to play are like Star Ocean First Departure, uh, Final Fantasy, Crystal Chronicles. I love that game. I loved it as a kid, and the fact that it's getting ported to the PS4 is going to allow me to play with other people online. So instead of owning like a bajillion Game Boy Advances just to play the game, because in order to play Crystal Chronicles multiplayer when it came out in the GameCube, you needed to own a separate Game Boy Advance just to be able to play as a second player, and you needed to own, if you wanted to play four players, you needed you, you needed basically three Game Boy Advances and a Game Boy control or a, a GameCube controller. So it, you needed to own three game, game Boys just to be able to fully experience the goddamn like game, to fully experience uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles with multiplayer. It, it was silly. It was silly, but you know, I am definitely looking forward to playing that later this year. I'm also looking forward to playing Room Factory 4 again. Uh, it actually comes out next month, my birthday month, by the way. And uh, th there's a lot of newer ones I'm interested in too. And uh, I'll talk about that later because I see another question actually that is going to pretty much make me talk about what games I'm looking for this year. And honestly, if there's another question like that in here and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll just segue into the question right now, to be honest. So Ghostmon26 asks, what are your top five RPGs that you're excited for? And he says, if you don't have uh, a top five for Japanese RPGs, you can include non-Japanese RPGs as well. So I, I can immediately tell you, Room Factory 5 is on my list, all right, for my top five Japanese RPGs I'm excited to play. Room Factory 4 was just so fun. Room Factory 4 was one of the games I first played on this channel, I think back in 2014 or 15. It was the same year I went to EVO, and I decided to play that game because Tales of Vesperia was getting claimed on my channel because I originally meant to play Tales of Vesperia first, but because of copyright claims, I decided to play Room Factory 4 and it turned out to be a really great playthrough. I enjoy the game so much. You could that game had like everything I could want in a game. You had like the dating, you had the dating mechanic, you had like fighting, you had RPG mechanics where you could just go out and level up and fight and grow crops. It's like a, a freaking farming simulator. You had quests, you, you could like freaking, you can craft a, a accessories, craft weapons, craft armor. Dude, you can go grind and farm for rare items out. You can like synthesize ability. It was crazy, dude. That game was fun. You had different weapon types, different abilities. And then the fact that you can like marry, depending on your the, the sex of the person you were, like you could marry a guy, a girl. Hell, you can even get a sex change in that game, which is crazy. <laughs> that game was awesome. 
Room Factory 4 literally delivers everything that I ever wanted in the video game. It's like, it's crack. And if the game was like actually multiplayer, it would be amazing. So Room Factory 5, if it's anything like Room Factory 4, if it has all that plus more, I, that is the game. That is the game I'm going to be hyped over, all right? <laughs> that is probably the game for my that's probably year the game of the year for me right there if it comes out this year and it has everything room factory 4 has plus multiplayer plus more it's a wrap all right i love room factory 4 and i'm probably gonna love room factory 5. so aside from room factory 5 being on my top 10 or top 5 list uh i would obviously have final fantasy 7 remake there um i'm really excited for that one it's a completely overhaul of the original final fantasy 7 story is supposed to be similar it's supposed it's supposed to just be a, a really big re not a reimagining but a, a huge remaster and if it's done right where nothing's watered down i'm going to love it so i have high hopes for square enix to learn from their past with final fantasy 15 and kingdom hearts 3 where they don't like you know they released the game too early and it's missing like some key components that would make the game better i'm hoping they take as much time so I i'm recording this on the 30th of january so maybe by the time i upload this video tomorrow they'll announce uh their hold they're pushing the game back to make more adjustments i'd be okay with it i'd be okay if they push the game back okay so if that happens between now and tomorrow that'd be great <laughs> but right now i'm telling you right now april april come that game coming out in april and we don't really know a bunch about it which is okay with me not knowing a lot about a game is okay but not for the press not to know too much about the game and it's about to release in like what by april i think the game's gonna get held back again i feel like the game's definitely being held back it's already been held back once but i i expect another uh release date pushback but anyway other than Final Fantasy 7, Bravely Default 2. I am ready for that. When they announced that at the Game Awards, dude, I was hyped. That was legit the only thing about the Game Awards that I was really hyped about was the fact that Bravely Default 2 is in the works and it's supposed to release this year. This year. Late 2020. Late 2020, man. So, and a lot of people are confused, like, Wait, don't we got Bravely Second? So why is it Bravely Default 2? So Bravely Default and Bravely Second are like connected to each other deeply. So like Bravely Second is just a direct sequel. Bravely Default 2 is basically Final Fantasy 2 or Final Fantasy whatever. You know how Final Fantasy stories aren't really connected? Okay, so Bravely Default and Bravely Second are like Final Fantasy X and X2. All right, they are direct, you know, direct with each other x2 is a direct sequel of x so bravely default 2 is just completely going to be a new set of heroes it's probably going to include references to the past game or whatever but pretty sure it's just completely new set of uh, a new a new world a new set of heroes and just a new new story all together so i'm really excited for that and i love the combat that bravely default and bravely second that is definitely what i expect turn-based games to be like bravely second and bravely default are like huge twist on the traditional uh rpg gameplay where it's, it's turn-based but they added to where you can do like stack attacks where you can do time you, you could brave 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 and you can do like three attacks in a row or whatever or four attacks depending on how many brave points you have or whatever and that was pretty cool and just the overall role system the 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 role system in the game was amazing you could set up all these brilliant strategies you could be low level you could just be high level whatever you can get through the game using broken strategies you could use these very crazy strategies whatever your play style was it was so fun being able to express yourself in that game was amazing being able to express yourself in a turn-based rpg is one of like one of the most fun feelings that you could ever have like that that series is amazing so i'm really excited for bravely default 2 coming out later this year so i would say after bravely default 2 the next game that I'm looking forward to this year is Tales of Arise. 
Now, I'm probably a real, I would consider myself to be a big fan of the Tell series. I love the Tell series, and I always look forward to seeing another mainline game of this series come out because I, I just absolutely adore the series. And I'm excited for it, but at the same time, I am scared to see another Tales game I might not like all the way because I feel like tell the tell series is probably low key had one of this one of the game series that has the most potential to just become bigger than what it is. I feel like there's so much potential in the tell series and then Namco Bandai just always seems to freeze up on like pretty much developing uh, that game into like a blockbuster hit man for like more than just anime fans. So Tales of Arise, I don't know what to expect. I, I don't know what to expect out of Tales of Arise. It could go, it could be like one of the best Tales games ever, or it could be just a bad Tales game. We haven't heard too much of this game, but I'm really hoping that they return the light to Tales series. Berserian Zestaria, I had a lot of criticisms about those games. Uh, even Exilia, all right? But I definitely want to see this series do well. As much as I criticize the games or complain about the games, I just want them to be able to improve and always build themselves up to be better, which is why I criticize these games heavily because it's like I really love the series. I don't want them to be dumbed down, like make the combat simple as fuck. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, don't make the game lame. Don't make it a linear ass hallway simulator to where exploration is like not even fun like there's no sense of exploration don't do that all right i'm hoping they can make the game feel fresh to veterans and make it feel like traditional to veterans while trying to bring in new a new audience and trying to build an audience all right so i i really do hope they get that down despite the criticisms that I want to say right now, but I'm not going to do that because this video would turn out to be like an hour and 50 minute long just to answer this one question that I'm still trying to answer. I got one more game to answer this question for Ghostmon, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm looking forward to Tales of Arise and the next game that I am looking forward to would be, can you guess it? Fantasy Star Online 2. Now, some of you probably were expecting me to say Persona 5 Royal. Trust me, I'm looking forward to that, but that's not top 5. That's top 10, but not top 5 since we already just played the game right. And it's just an it's just an upgraded version of Persona 5. So, that's that's literally last on my list. I'm excited for that, but top 5 are these five games I just listed, all right? And Fantasy Star Online 2 is definitely one of my top five. I've been looking forward to playing this game for so long, for like the past six years, when they said in 2014 or 15 that the game was coming over here to the West, but they fucking lied. We are finally getting it. It was a six-year-old promise, but we're finally getting Fantasy Star Online 2, I'm a big fan of that series. I played Fantasy Star Zero, that was the first Fantasy Star game I played. And then I liked that so much, I went to Fantasy Star uh, Portable, and I liked that a lot. And I moved to Fantasy Star Online, or Fantasy Star Portable 2, and I just kept playing them, and I heard, I heard that Fantasy Star Online 2 was coming out, I was like, I'm hyped, Japan got it, can't wait to get our stuff next year, can't wait to get, get it the next year where where was the next maybe the next year w when does this game come out like years later 2020 we're finally getting it you know and it's been a long time coming but i can't wait to play it i'm i'm excited to play it uh when it comes out i want to just do a community like once a week thing playing fantasy star because that's how crazy i was for the grind of fantasy star fantasy star is like i want to say like anime monster hunter it's like a faster moving monster hunter for me so i love fantasy star i tried to play monster hunter because the concept seems similar to fantasy star but i just couldn't get in the monster hunter it was just too slow for me it was like a slower version of fantasy star and i was like you know what i'm done but 
those are the five games that I am looking forward to. Rune Factory 5, Final Fantasy 7, right, remaster, Def uh, Bravely Default 2, all right, Fantasy Star Online 2, okay, and Tales of Arise. So those five games, I'm definitely excited to play. And um, yeah, that's pretty much answering Ghostmon's question there. So we have a question from Tex saying, since Sakurai is pulling six more DLC fighters, what are three characters on your wish list? And he says, no matter how crazy it is, you can say it. So the three characters I still want, regardless if they're assist trophies already, I really want Crystal from the Star Fox series to be in uh, the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate because it makes sense. You get another Star Fox rep, she's a female rep, and she can play her as her own character because she has uh, a move set. She can literally just copy and paste from Star Fox Adventures onto this game. She can use her staff. She has a staff so you can use magic. She's like, come on, man. Come, it's, it's all there, bro. Just give her the staff weapon. Give her her up B to be the staff, the staff twirl to let her get back on the, the jet rocket or whatever you want to call it. And she's got like a really good move set she could have. And they can just easily like develop it off the staff, based off the staff. Like it wouldn't be that fucking hard to, to include Crystal. So I think that's definitely my number one. I'm still rooting for my girl Crystal from Star Fox. And if we can get, if we can get almost eight, I think it's nine. No, I think it's eight. If you don't count the variations of the female and the male ver uh, versions of the fire emblem main characters i think it's eight fire emblem characters if we can get eight fire emblem characters we can get full star fox characters so add my girl crystal please because at this point we only have fox falco wolf and adding her would add what four so yeah that's not bad so come on add my girl crystal second character i would want is a tells representative i would definitely want my boy lloyd irving all right now, if I had to pick any character, I would say Judith because she's perfect for Smash. But I guess maybe the sex appeal would be too much for good little boys and good little girls. So we're going to have to go with Lloyd Irving because he was on a Nintendo console. Tales of Symphonia did sell the most in America. And that's uh, Tales of Symphonia was basically what got the Tales franchise on the map over here in the West. It sold like 100,000 copies of the game in like a month or something and i know that i was one of them me and my brother definitely cop tells of symphonia and uh i was I'm, I'm really a fan of lloyd lloyd irving isn't the smartest dude in the bunch but my man got that heart he he, he got that he got that heart that's all that matters lord irving would be great his up b could just be omega tempest a tempest his side b could be sonic thrust i don't care bro he, his neutral b could be demon fang you see like it's easy bro easy character easy character and people would love to have a tails rep in the game i don't care about pac-man pac-man was just pac-man is clearly like the most known namco bandai character yes i understand pac pac-man Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, whatever. All right. That's, it was known in arcades and all that BS, but Lloyd Irving would be a pretty cool rep. Uh, the third character I would love to see in Ultimate, I would like to see Isaac from Golden Sun. Again, like I said, he's an assist trophy, but I would love to see Isaac from Golden Sun being a main character. And if not, if not Isaac, you know what? Uh, give me you know who i want i want travis touchdown travis touchdown would be such a good goddamn pick for this game because he's got a game coming out on the switch and then the, this year this year he's got a game coming out so i think it'd be a great idea to introduce people to travis touchdown early via smash and pretty much you know advertise the upcoming game you know just to promote their own sales they already did it with uh byleth so why can't you do it again with travis touchdown you know so i hope they do put travis touchdown in the game he, he's got that down beam saber that dude's pretty cool they, his games are fun uh freaking no more heroes is one of my favorite games on the wii and I, I played both of those games and beat them in the like 
in one day. I sat down and beat Oat or No More Heroes 2 in like a six hour sitting. I, dude, I had so much fun playing those games. I just remember buying it. It is coming through Amazon and I played it and then sat through it and just beat it in one go. I was like, man, this is great. But No More Heroes rep Travis Touchdown would be pretty cool. So, you know what? I'm interested in what you guys would like to see. What three characters you would like to see in Smash. So leave it, leave a question or leave leave your answers down below in the comment section. I like to see what you guys think. Uh, what you guys would like to see in Smash Ultimate. But anyway, uh, on to the next question. Ion asks, what is the worst LP you have ever done? And which one is your favorite? The worst LP I've ever done, if I had to say, was... I think some of y'all already know it because it's one of two games. <laughs> it was definitely Akiba's trip. I fucking hated that game, bro. Like I was enjoying, I was enjoying the game up to a point, and I don't think it's because I played it on the hardest difficulty. It's because the game lacked depth to me. The game was so buggy. The game was just so cliche and generic to me. Like the, the the designs for the characters were very generic. I was not a fan of the the damn designs. The gameplay was really boring, dude. It was just mashing buttons. I fucking was so mad. And there was like bugs where the game would freeze on. I would do a whole bunch of shit and the game would freeze. It froze twice on me. And then the one time I was almost I was I was playing the game on the hardest difficulty and I was about to beat this hard ass mission and then I get punched right and I get punched into the loading screen and I come back in from the other loading screen and then guess fucking what I have to redo the mission because the game was poorly fucking designed to where you can get punched into the loading zone I don't know why they, they designed it to where you can get hit into a loading zone it shouldn't load the loading zone unless you're holding forward towards lo the loading zone, which I wasn't. I literally just got punched into the loading zone and had to redo that that hard ass quest, and I was so fucking mad. So that that was like that 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 game was just it was it overall it was it wasn't it, Chief. Akiba's trip was like I can't I can't play that again. <laughs> like the gameplay was whack. It was just hacking, it mash the button. And I thought there would be some kind of skill to the game, but there isn't. It's just you level up. You literally level up to do enough damage. There's no, like, guard cancel. There's no layer of gameplay underneath Akiba's Trip. It's just literally mash buttons. It's just like a fan service ass game. And, and, and I've played fan service games before, but those other fan service games were fun. They, they were at least better designed than Akiba's Trip. But my favorite gameplay, my favorite playthrough that I've ever done, I have to think about that. I think maybe my favorite playthrough that I've done, that's that's a hard question. But if I had to say one of my favorite playthroughs, I think because of how memorable this playthrough is, just for not me, but for everybody, and that it was pretty much the game that I played that pretty much made me like a better gamer it, it overall made me just think better it made me logically think of like ways to just like just overcome challenges a lot easier it, it, it just made me into a more effective person really and i'm gonna say shin megami tensei 4 as fucking rough as I, at the time, as rough as that playthrough was at the beginning, when I, when I was just struggling against the Minotaur, David, I was like, I was livid, all right? I was mad. I was angry. I felt every emotion, all right? Just from the gameplay, all right? <laughs> just from the game design perspective, this game morphed me into the SMTBS strategy exploit breaking the game person that i am now man exploit i just exploit everything i can the game literally teaches you to exploit anything and everything to overcome challenges that's what that game taught me all right so 
half the game the reason why i'm so good at most rpgs is because of smt4 smt smt4 literally teaches you to take advantage of whatever you can not just buffs not not just debuffs get good get good i was forced to get good so smt4 is my favorite playthrough in in the fact that it taught me a lot of fundamentals that i wasn't aware of before that i needed to take advantage of like other games like maybe like some of the final fantasy games you can get away without buffing without like taking advantage of all everything but that smt4 smt games in general just force you to take advantage of whatever weaknesses just bs fusion whatever find whatever works <laughs> find whatever works <laughs> i learned the most from shimigami tensei 4 when it comes to just take advantage of whatever and be aware and just get the dub any way you can so that's why that's my favorite playthrough i've done on this channel and on top of that that it, it created so many memorable moments it's <laughs> it, it's it's created memes for this channel okay so smt4 overall is my favorite playthrough because i think so so much more came from that like for the community than any other game <laughs> like i can't think of any other game that's done that for us so i think smt4 is probably my favorite playthrough so kawaii persona asks, do you have a bunch of trivial facts that you know and are just waiting to use them actually i do did you know there are 36 cat species in the world yeah wild right did you know about 48 percent of women in the united states play video games yeah it's pretty crazy right <laughs> trivial facts so rugio asks are you going to evil this year unfortunately i can give you a decisive answer on that no is my answer because around the time evil comes around i will be moving out of this apartment that's when our leases here in and we've already decided to pretty much move out of this apartment uh, uh on the pretty much we're, we're not going to renew our lease here so we're, we're moving out and that's around the time we're going to be moving out so it, it'll be hard to attend evo while pretty much moving into a new place all right and who knows if I might not, I might not even be in the same state around that time. So it's going to be hard to make plans when I have to make plans elsewhere rather than spending time going to Evo or something like that. So it, it kind of sucks. So I, I can tell you right now, I'm probably just not going to be able to manage to go to Evo this year. If it was like maybe July, we would have went. Cause we all want to go to evil again all my friends me willie terrell uh taylor shiny marky marky mark colin everybody in in our close group of people i guess we we definitely would have went if it was a better time but i know personally i'm not going because i got stuff to attend to elsewhere such as making sure i have a house over my head so that should answer that question all right so we got a question here from atm if you had to pick between bernadetta and kawakami which one and why and also can i get a hearty solid hole oh! <laughs> anyway all right so for those who don't know who've never seen me play persona 5 or played three houses fire emblem um there's a character in fire emblem named bernadetta and at the end of the game i married her and in persona 5 i decided to date kawakami who was a teacher who was my teacher in persona 5 and he's basically 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 asking which waifu do i prefer and i can easily say kawakami kawakami is definitely more reliable um I would definitely pick Kawakami based on like the fact that I, I find her more attractive than Bernadetta easily. I love Bernadetta, you know, Bernadetta, I'm there to protect her, but Kawakami, 
Kawakami's gonna get me right. You feel me? Sorry, Bernadetta. It is how it is. Jay Ryland says, are you gonna play Cyberpunk 277? Only if y'all want me to play Cyber 277, but for the most part, I'll be sticking to what works on the channel. But I might play that on my off time behind the scenes. I think it'd be really fun because that game looks amazing. And plus, it has Keanu, Keanu Reeves. It has John Wick in the game. John Wick is going to be in Cyberpunk 2077. So why would I not play that? But if you guys want to see it recorded or whatever, y'all got to let me know. Because one way or another, I'm going to own that game. So Balfour asks, when are you making your top 10 video game waifu list? This is funny because we kind of just had to pick and choose between one waifu or the other. But I don't think I've had 10 video game wa waifus. Well, technically, I think I did. I think if I had to pick for one from each of the games that I played, I could do a video like that. I think going forward in the future, uh, I might be making silly videos like that. Stay tuned. All right. Balfour, stay tuned. But anyway, um, I think we're going to go ahead and end off our AMA with this question from Q. And he asks, if you can go back to 2012, <laughs> if I could go back to 2012 me and give yourself one piece of advice after eight years of YouTube and Twitch, what would it be? I would say I would give myself the advice of don't be afraid to collaborate and don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zones when it comes to making videos for because for so long like making any other footage other than lps i was kind of uncomfortable in making and then i started making uh, like montage videos and whatnot and they did they did well almost every montage i do does surprisingly well uh, nowadays and if I got if I started doing that early I would have so much experience in making them and it'd be super easy but at this point I'm still making them at this point in time 2020 me still kind of feels reluctant reluctant to put anything else out there other than LPs because I don't know I guess I just didn't start early enough to start doing other uh, content but it's never too late all right better late than never so that's what I would also tell them. It's, it's better late than never. Even if you, even if you, even if you do it a little bit later, it's always good to have done it than not to do it. So, 2012 me, I would tell him to just step outside that comfort zone a little bit more. All right. And I know it sounds scary, but it's how you can improve way more drastically and, and and quicker if you just step outside your comfort zone and just do things that you normally wouldn't be i guess willing to do like montages were like a thing and then like the channel updates I, i'm always very uh on edge when i make those like i guess my anxiety just kind of gets in the way of that but after a while you get used to it that's how it was like i didn't like making channel updates before but I like making them. It's just, you know, anxiety sometimes gets the better of me. And that's another thing I have to work on. Just 2020 me is working on my anxiety and get in front of the camera. And a lot of the times I, I see myself in the mirror or I get in, and just come over here to film a video. And I'm like, man, I look like a mess. I look, like, I look stupid. Probably not going to be able to get my point across, or across very clearly. So it's like overcoming that anxiety is like really key to just being able to step out of uh, my comfort zone. So if you can find a way to overcome your anxiety, 2012 Robert, um, you'll be able to step out of your comfort zone a lot more. And I think I'm working on something. I'm actually going to a therapist next Tuesday to, to talk to a therapist about possible solutions for my anxiety and whatnot. So I, I'm, I'm working on that. Better late than never, right? I'm working on it everything I can because I want to be able to do my best when it comes to just being the person that I am because I, I just feel like I I just I feel trapped in myself sometimes I feel like I could be so much better but it's like I'm not letting myself be better it's like I'm not reaching out to that potential and I, I don't know it's just anxiety 
I don't know if it's stress or something else, but I'm going to go talk to a therapist next Tuesday about it, and hopefully we can find some kind of solution. But uh, pretty much that's what I would tell myself is to overcome that anxiety, find some way to overcome the anxiety. I would tell myself, don't be afraid to, you know, to step out of the comfort zone and don't be afraid to collaborate because collaborate, I, there's so many people that actually uh, wanted to collaborate with me and I see them now and they're like so big, they're actually much bigger than I am. And I'm like, man, maybe I should have collaborated with you. But it's like, you know, I don't really regret it, but I am here. I, I'm at a pretty good place, I want to say, but uh, it could be better. But definitely, that's what I would tell myself in 2012, right there. So I think we're done. I think that is all the questions I could. I actually wasn't even going to answer most of these questions. I was only going to pick a few of them, but I think I answered 90% of the questions that were in the Discord, <laughs> surprisingly enough. So that's pretty awesome. But yeah, that, that's it. That wraps up our first AMA for 2020 and going forward into the future i want to say again every last thursday i will go ahead and make a video every last thursday of each month i will go ahead and make uh amas and upload them on the last day of the month so the last day of the month is actually tomorrow so this video will be up on the on the next day clearly you're watching it now so you're you already know i did what i did but anyway, whew, that was fun. That was actually a little bit more fun than I thought it'd be. <laughs> so if you guys actually did enjoy uh, this type of video and you guys definitely want to see more, let me know. Because I will, I will definitely do more than just AMAs. I will do more personal things. I actually wanted to do like a, a dumbass cooking vlog once. Because I started making like... I wouldn't say started making more food, but I definitely got more comfortable to the point to where I could like experiment making food. Like the other time, I just I just literally yesterday made like a, a, a bacon egg waffle sandwich and I thought that was amazing. And I thought it was slimy. All right. I had the I had the waffles, I had the bacon, I had the sunny side up eggs and seasoned eggs too, man. It was great. It was all delicious. But uh, if you guys want to see like different things, just let me know like what type of videos you would like to see for 2020. Let me know in the comment section below. Um, I am out. If you don't follow me already on Twitter, follow me on Twitter for frequent updates. I always talk about when I'm going to stream and when I'm going to upload videos over there. Uh, go into the Discord. That's the best way to reach me. And if you want to ask any questions for upcoming, ask me anything, go into our discord and the discord is in the link below this video all right in the description box obviously and then join the discord and then you can ask me shit and you can hang out and do stuff and hang out with the other people there it's great our discord is great so come out and uh i think you'll have a lot of fun but that pretty much wraps up this video i'm out <laughs>